afternoon, everybody. My name is Cameron Lewis. I'm a fifth year PhD student at Howard University from Buffalo, New York. And I'm going to talk to you about my research. The title of my research is Quantum Corners, Improving Emergency Response with Smart Traffic Management and Quantum Sensors. So, my background is in hardware, uh, electrical engineering, but I'll take you on this quantum journey that I went through recently within this last year. So, let's see what we come up with. So now, let's give you a background, just an introduction. So starting with the traffic problem that we have in Washington, D.C. Dick, Washington, D.C. currently. So if you drive, especially in D.C., even if you drive in Atlanta, we have a big traffic problem. Biggest traffic problem comes from, you know, D.C. specifically, having a high population density, and then limited road infrastructure. You be driving around, it's like a one way on like every corner. And then, in D.C. specifically, we have a high number of more commuters. So that brings a lot, communities as in people that come in from like Virginia, coming from Maryland, they actually come into the district to come to work. So that basically creates a big problem. So some of the possible solutions that have been, you know, by traffic officials and also people that work in the government to solve this problem is invest in public transportation. Obviously they tell us all the time, carpool, that doesn't work. Then expanding road infrastructure, that would be a viable solution, but that's a lot of money and it's high manager. And then DC, we do that specifically, there's always construction going around, always, every time we go somewhere. But that's causing more problems too, because it's actually creating more traffic. Yes. So, one, uh, basically, let's ask some tech on to how we can kind of like, can I just take it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. When you have, these are some of like just the normal solutions that we come up with. But let's actually add some tech onto it and try and do smart traffic management. So smart traffic management is using like IoT sensors and kind of communicating over like you know like Wi-Fi or even doing things like Bluetooth to kind of provide additional information to help out so like your traffic problem. And some benefits of it are you get predictive insights, you could have a cost reduction, also to enhance safety. But the most important one that I want to focus on is improve emergency response. So this one right here. So now let's give you some background on improving emergency response. So like I said. Now, getting more specific into the DC, the emergency response problem in DC is there's so much traffic that an emergency response vehicle will actually be lodged behind multiple cars, especially on like a one-way street. And you'll hear them blowing their sirens to like, I have to get by. And they can't get by because you have cars on one side parked and then cars on both sides traveling back and forth. And I experience this all the time because I drive every day. And <laughs> it's very like, it's annoying for us as drivers, but when you're thinking about real life, the minutes, it's very much like minutes between saving a life and like losing a life. And so this is a very huge problem. So we need to be able to clear that road so that these emergency responsibilities can get through. So there has been work in smart traffic management to actually solve this problem. And then some of the IoT sensors that are used for this currently, you have air sensors, temperature sensors, and then RF tags that they can use to kind of solve that. But we're all here for quantum. So how can we actually migrate to, you know, using some quantum for that, or specifically quantum sensors? So now, let me give you a background of quantum sensors. So now, with that migration of quantum sensors, you can actually go into five different categories. So you have quantum electromagnetic sensors, quantum imaging, and then you have us going to my favorite, which is at the end, which is transversal applications. I'll talk more about that in the next slide. But when you have these sensors, there's certain applications that you can do with these sensors. So like quantum imaging is actually a little bit more for like our background because quantum imaging, you play around with LIDAR, radar, which is used for autonomous driving as you see the car that's on the table. So then you also have weather monitoring, which using thermometers and durometers, which actually could do like weather predictions and just more advanced. That's one good uh, another application of a quantum sensor. Now, when you look at the quantum sensor, and I did, these are kind of hypotheticals at the very bottom that I put out here uh, based off of our problem. So possible information for quantum sensors you can get. So using a LiDAR and radar for autonomous driving, when you have that for a quantum sensor, you can actually get enhanced 3D mapping for 3D for street traffic. So we play around with 3D mapping right now in our research. And so a quantum sensor will be able to give us just more accurate, more information to kind of refine that 3D map. Now, one of the applications that I, um, before is inertial uh, navigation. And so with that, you can actually use that to do real-time collision detection. So not even just like, like just being able to like sit in your car and then know, okay, a biker is coming full speed and might hit my car. Mm -hmm. Or this bird is like flying, it's about to just come in front of my face. Like those type of things by being able to sense around your environment. And then temperature, 
congesting and tracking. So not just using uh, these quantum sensors for just weather monitoring, but actually you can use quantum sensors to actually look at the temperature of a room. So like everybody in here, we all have heat within us. And we could say this room is highly congested because of the, the temperature and seeing that. So you can use that for highly congested areas, such as like, if you're, you know, a concert is like downtown or something like that, and it's like, it's gonna be very hot over there. It's a lot of people over there. All right, I probably won't go on that route. So, like I said before, we wanna focus on transversal applications. Now, what is a transversal application? In the realm of quantum, quantum sensing, it's the intersection between quantum sensing, quantum communications, and quantum computing. So, I think you talked about it on the first day when you talked about the three different branches of like quantum technology. And so, transversal applications just merging all three of those together to solve a certain problem. And guess what problem we're solving today that uses transversal application? Smart traffic. So, now with that, um, actually, this would be a perfect time to kind of like be a little interactive with what we have going on at Howard. So, the example of a transfer application will be propagating quantum microwaves towards applications in communication and sensing. So, I've said and I brought that up because it's interesting because a lot of this stuff can be done, I, I believe a lot of stuff that can be done with quantum with what we have right now. And I say that because right over there, Dr. Su Yen is our electromagnetic professor at Howard University and he teaches the class of microwaves. But as you're seeing, microwaves are something that's not new, but it's actually being used for communication and sensing for quantum. Going down to the next one, we have IoT smart traffic management with quantum sensors. So this was actually a paper by Dr. Searles. So I don't know where he is. He sent it when we I presented the first time. So I had this idea, it started off an idea, but then he's like, no, people are actually doing this. So this paper, quantum optical sensors and IoT for image data analysis traffic management, that's the actual name of the paper if you want to look it up. Mm -hmm. They're actually using quantum optical communication to be able to not only do IoT smart traffic management, but actually the communication system that's needed is based on around quantum. And so like it's possible to do it if you have the idea and now you can look in the real children and see that people are actually doing it themselves. And then let's talk about this is funded by IBM. So what that means is it's a company. We're trying to make money. Like that's the purpose of it. And now we have uh, I didn't know that was funny, I was being serious. <laughs> We've got commercial quantum technology. So when you come up after the presentation and speak with Aaron and Robert or with our demo, please speak to Robert because Robert is going to be very versed in the commercialization of these products and uh, quantum technology. So um, one company right now that's actually probably one of your competitors, PsyQuantum, is actually using fusion-based quantum computing, fusion-based quantum computation to actually build their qubits for their quantum computers, and it's based on the photonics architecture, which. Eric Sebron, who is sitting right here in the front, is at Howard University, and he introduced myself and a lot of the other students to the basic of photonics and also just the basic of quantum in general. So I say all that to say is we already have what we need to be able to start this revolution to actually do some work. So now let's look at how we took what we have at Howard University and created a test bed to be able to explore these applications. So now, for our smart traffic management problem, we wanted to actually propose a sensing system that would design enhanced 3D maps, detect real-time collision, discover congestion by temperature. As you see, I did a nice alliteration right there with all the Ds, so 3Ds, yes. And then smart traffic management integration. So now, we want to take this sense and sense, ah, excuse me, sense and system, right? And we want to be able to take that information and rely and be able to give like a really intelligent system that has a whole bunch of information, right? But what are you going to do with that information? So now that comes into the autonomy part. So the first thing when you do when you have an autonomous vehicle is you, uh, you plan, sorry, you map your environment, you actually sense your environment, see what's going on. Then the next thing is path planning. So now we want to actually plan the best route for our emergency vehicle. And so now going from there and actually taking that and then creating the road and doing the actuators and whatnot, that's just a normal autonomous stack. But where we want to kind of make this more interactive and that would be the quantum part that it comes into is, now, if I'm telling you to go down this route because just go down this route. But what if something suddenly happens, such as an emergency vehicle just got an emergency and they have to get by you? I want to make a system to where this emergency vehicle will have on top of it a sensor that be able to not only say, you have to go down this way, but also send a signal out to all the surrounding cars in the area and reroute your entire GPS so that you move out of the way from that emergency vehicle and don't interfere. That sounds like a solution to actually solve the problem that uses technology instead of just building new roads. So now, that's the last part. How do we reroute the GPS of the surrounding vehicle so that you can actually have a clear path for the uh, car to go through? And so then the last part is, 
instead of thinking about it, let's actually create an autonomous heart test bed about it to figure it out. And with that test bed, we have two state of technologies. We have state of the art technologies and then cutting edge technology. The state of the art technology that we're going to use to build our autonomous car are of our sensing and also like our mapping, pretty much our localization and mapping. However, we're going to use SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping. That is the foundation of our research that I learned from the late great Dr. Michaela Moo. And then uh, the RGB depth camera is what we're going to be using for our input to our sensor right now until we get a later a light or later on. And then we're going to be using a microcomputer just to be able to store this up right now. So that's what we have the Raspberry Pi for. It. And then the cutting the technologies that we're going to use on top of that, on top of the state of the art, is we're going to use a graph neural network to honestly increase the speed up of the computer vision algorithm. So the computer vision algorithm that you'll see later on in the demo is ORB SLAM 2, which has uh, 3D points which are resembled in a graph. And it's very slow, especially on a low computing device like a, a Raspberry Pi. So we're going to actually use an FPGA to do a graph neural network, but hardware-based graph neural network to where it actually does speed up on the most time consuming part, which would be the bundle adjustment. And so then we're going to use high level synthesis. So I just said we're going to do a hardware-based graph neural network. If you heard graph neural network, any type of neural network, you think automatically software. We don't do software. We do hardware. So for us to do that, we're going to actually use a high level synthesis tool, which is a tool to be able to create very much, help you create very much complex architecture and structure, but in for hardware, because hardware is based in VHDL instead of a high level language like a Python or a C++. And then the last thing is edge computing. So edge computing, really replaces cloud computing where you have, you do like a big neural network training or things like that and you put it up in the cloud and then you just send them results and you have to do it over like, you know, Wi-Fi just connection. <laughs> edge computing is actually directly putting the model right on the edge device. So we got that, well I got that from my time spent at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory with Dr. Jeff Chavis to where he showed me his lab and how they did like a lot of edge computing on Raspberry Pis with um, uh, random forest trees. For IoT traffic management, smart cities too. So now here's our results. So I'll talk to you about what we are gonna do, the idea that we have, and then now it's actually what we got so far. So here's a picture of our proposed system system, where we're at right now currently. So this is a screenshot of our Raspberry Pi, and that picture in the frame right there, that's actually Aaron. So Aaron is standing while he's got himself in the view, and he's trying to map basically just his environment. So the three the green dots, all over here in this area, you can see that the camera's picking up the uh, little points of Aaron and actually putting them. And then those actually are turned over to the right into, I'm oh, sorry, where the red dots are all the points picked up actually put on the map. So this is the ORB SLAM 2 algorithm. And then the blue dot is actually, the blue right here is actually an example of a keyframe. So this is at the beginning, so he didn't really get too much to where it like was able to like go through the whole algorithm and figure out what the keyframes are like accurately. So you just see all these blue keyframes just on top of each other right now. But if he was to move the camera around and actually move, you'll see it as time goes about. It says, oh, this is a keyframe. And the keyframe is uh, 3D points, a uh, frame that has multiple 3D points from different images. So if I see these points in multiple images, then I know, okay, this frame is very accurate to where I can base around my, my localization. Because the localization is really comes basically just estimating where you are to somebody else. Like I could say, oh, I'm at the center of this lecture hall right now because I'm saying, oh, Robert's right here in the beginning. So like I'm estimating my location based off of Robert instead of me having like GPS where I actually like using like a satellite. 